Good evening and thanks for honoring us with your presence, ladies and gentlemen, uh, members of the, for the state. I have two statements to make this evening. And after each statement, I will give a chance for maybe one question or clarification. Because of time, I have another engagement at 6 p.m. So I must leave here before 6. The first address <coughs> is my exit address at the end of duty as Cabinet Secretary for Interior and National Administration. As you are aware, for the last two years, I've been the country's security minister, and I thought I owe the people of Kenya an exit speech so that we can account for our, the two years in which, by the grace of God, we have had the privilege to serve our country in that office. <coughs> Since the 27th of October, 2022, I have had the immense privilege of serving our country as the Interior Minister. Appointment to this role was not only humbling, was not only a humbling symbol of confidence by President William Ruto, but also it thrust me into a most monumental responsibility of providing leadership to and coordinating the organs of our homeland security. For its unique complement of extensive functional control of Kenya's internal security infrastructure, the Interior Ministry has provided me with a once in a lifetime opportunity to appreciate a little more profoundly the, the centrality of security to Kenya's primordial quest for inclusive prosperity for all its people. To appreciate the modest strides made in the past two years, it is apt to revisit the state of our national security that was prevailing as at August, September 2022, when I took over. I took over this sensitive duty at Arambe House at a time when communities in northeastern Kenya and in Lamu were experiencing frequent and sustained terror attacks, marauding bandits, and run amok over communities in vast, vast parts of the Northern Rift Valley region. Gang crime was at its peak in Nairobi City, the Kenyan passport production and supply system had all but collapsed, and key homeland security organs were ill-equipped and in dire need of reforms and reinvention. The end of my tour, due, my tour of duty as Kenya's interior minister of two years invites an introspection and reflection on the journey that I, with the loyal and patriotic support of hundreds of thousands of officers and staff in the police, prisons, immigration, and other citizen-facing services of the ministry have traveled. I attribute any successes that were achieved in the last two years to make Kenya safer during the last two years, I attribute this success to the various ranks of officers and staff of the ministry. However, any performance inadequacies during my tenure are mine because I believe the ministry staff and officers did their best. 24 months of hard work by frontline multi-agency formations embedded deep in the forests of the Bonny Enclave has paid off with two years of calm. Sacrificial fighting power of elite police formations in the forward operating bases spread along the risky frontier areas 
of Liboy, Fafi, Div, Kotulo, and such like areas have resulted in two years of great victory over dangerous terrorists who would have otherwise hurt Kenya and its people. Fellow Kenyans, it has been the honor of my life not only to oversee a coordinated and policy-driven war against terrorists, but also to visit the elite police units protecting Kenya and its people at some of the most dangerous locations in our territory. Each moment, I had a chat or shared a meal or even took a selfie with security officers in the front line in the war against terror, there was always a profound surge of pride in the knowledge that a dedicated and patriotic cohort of our security forces remain alert day and night to prevent terrorists and other dangerous criminals from accessing Kenya to cause harm to its people. For, a protract for protracted periods, I have traveled by air, land, and sea to oversee counter-terrorism operations in Ziwalata, Poromoko, Kiunga, Mpeketoni, Langola Simba, and other parts of Lamu. Sometimes on Christmas Day, some other times on Good Friday, or other times covertly at night, just to make sure that we got it right. I have been to Wajia, Mandera, Takaba, and other parts of our country exposed to the threat of terror, just to give morale to frontline security officers and their commanders, and also to listen to communities in search of durable solutions against the violence of terrorist groups. Throughout the past two years, nothing has given me greater sense of fulfillment than the long days and sometimes humid nights spent in some of the farthest outposts within our territory. Therefore, fellow Kenyans, as I relinquish the leadership of the Interior Ministry, which I've already done, I am proud to report that save for a few inevitable losses, Lamu and northeastern Kenya are much safer and calmer today than the situation that prevailed in the last half of 2022. To our gallant security officers who paid the ultimate price with their limb or life to keep Kenya safe, I salute you and promise that Kenya will never forget your valor and patriotic sacrifice. May the souls of the officers who have lost their lives in the protection of our homeland and its people find perpetual rest in eternity. Equally, the memory of civilian souls lost through injury inflicted by terrorists will forever evoke our collective duty to keep Kenya free from danger, whatever its source. Fellow Kenyans, by the end of 2022, over 135 innocent Kenyans, including 20 security officers, had been killed by marauding bandits in parts of Baringo, Laikipia, Samburu, Trukana, West Pokot, and El Geo Maraquet counties within a span of six months. During the same period, dozens of schools were closed, thousands of families were displaced.